In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this in the Fusion page of DaVinci Resolve. Uh, what is it? I don't know. Does it do anything useful? Uh, no. Does it look cool? I kind of think so. But most importantly, it is an amazing example of some really cool modifiers in the Fusion page. And if you don't know what a modifier is, great. I'm going to talk about that and show you how to make this. Cool, cool. I'm getting rid of everything. And in Fusion, the first thing I'm doing is creating a background node. I am making this a green background node. And on that, I'm going to click this button to add an ellipse mask. I'm going to make this uh, much smaller, something like 0.02 to 0.02 to this, make this little green ball. Then I'm just going to copy and paste that again. So we have ellipse one, and I will rename this to ellipse two. Um, right now they are overlapped, but if I move any one of them, you see, yep, we got two of them, uh, two masks on one background node. Now getting back to some fusion basics, you know we have all the controls for any node you press in the inspector here. And there are a number of ways to interact with these controls. Um, of course, you can just like drag them around here or in the viewer itself to change any of these parameters. But a core functionality, of course, is setting a keyframe. So you set a keyframe, come forward, and then it moves over the course of that keyframe. Probably the next step up from that is right clicking and adding an expression. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do with expressions. I've touched on some of that before, but uh, then some other options are right clicking and publishing, um, which is helpful. Oh, we're actually gonna do that. We're actually gonna do that. I'm gonna go to ellipse one and right click on center and go to publish. And you'll see that opens up this modifiers tab up here, which now we just have that uh, parameter sort of just pulled to the second page but this lets us do some really cool stuff you'll see soon. But if I go back to this ellipse two, the next thing we have is actual full modifiers. If I right click on the center and go to modify with, we have a whole bunch of options here. The first one we are gonna look at is the perturb modifier. If I click this, it will add it onto that center parameter over in modifiers, this perturb. And if I just play, now that green ball is just flying all over the place. And uh, everything about this random motion is dictated by the new controls we have here in the modifiers tab. I don't want it uh, nearly this intense, so I'm gonna pull down the strength just a little bit. Um, alternatively, we could keep that one and pull down either the X and Y scale. If we only wanted it on Y, you know, we could pull down X all the way, or we could pull both of these down. But if I reset both of those to one, we can just pull in the strength so it won't go nearly as far. I'm also gonna pull up the speed a little bit. So now uh, it won't go as far out, but it will fly around a little bit faster. Maybe I'll pull that back up to like, maybe like seven, yeah. We want some distance for what we're about to do. So hey, random motion with the modifier. That's pretty cool, but really uh, this next step is very, is where stuff starts to come together. I'm gonna create a new background node. I'm gonna make this one red. I will preview that here. And I'm going to uh, search for, by the way, if you don't know, I'm pulling up this search window by pressing shift space. If I start searching for, if I start searching for triangle, I'll get this triangle uh, mask tool. And I'm very quickly gonna bring these back up and make this little arrow. Uh, I am actually going to perfectly dial this in with this coordinate system. I'm gonna set the X for both 0.1 and 0.3 at 0.5 and the Y for 0.2 at 0.5, is that right? Oh, yes. Um, and then the Y for this one at 0.45, the Y for this one at 0 0.55. Uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 is the center. So now uh, we have this perfectly centered little arrow. And if we just change this X, that will dictate how, how pointy it is. Now, I'm gonna connect the output of this background two to the output of background one that will merge them together. So now we got the two green balls and this red arrow on this merge. First thing, uh, I'm just gonna scale down this arrow a little bit cool and then whew, things start getting cool like you saw in the example i want this arrow to uh always uh be between these two dots and always pointing at this second dot from the first and we're actually going to use one tool in two pretty different ways so on the center for this merge you could always just add in a, a transform node here but we have transform nodes uh transform controls rather right on the merge so we're going to do this here on the center i'm going to right click and go to modify with offset position. That will add to modifiers. And now we have position and offset. And if I right click on position, I can connect to, and I can go to perturb one, where we published that center, even though we didn't do anything to it. So I'll connect that to the center of ellipse one and go back to that offset and connect the offset 
to the perturb value. The value coming from that is after all the processing. So that is the center of the uh, second green ball flying around. And so now it's off kind of here in the middle of nowhere, but that's because this mode is set to offset. So it's taking one and it's like pushing it in a certain direction. What we want to do is change this to average. And now that center is perfectly between this position and its offset. And as it flies around, it is always halfway. So it even like pushes further when that dot pushes further away. That's very cool, but you'll see this arrow is still always pointing to the right. But if we go back to tools, on this angle, I'm gonna right click, modify with uh, there, offset angle. So it's the same offset tool, but now it knows it's working like with, with the, the angle value. And this one uh, will work with less work, but we still have to connect it. So that position we are connecting to ellipse center and that offset we are connecting to perturb value and boom, it knows this coordinate, it knows this coordinate and it's saying, okay, from this coordinate, always look at this other one. And from here, we can come back to that triangle. We can make it more pointy or less pointy. We can even make it more pointy and then come back to this merge and scale it down even more. We could change the colors, do all sorts of stuff. You wanna see something wild? Let's go back to this ellipse one on modifiers and actually add a perturb to this first center. I'm gonna uh, turn this way down, just so it's like barely wobbling around, but all the other math stays correct. The arrow is always uh, connected to both of those points at once. So even though this one is moving a little bit, even if it were to start moving all over the place, the arrow would always be around it. So now it looks like they're, this is almost like, you know, sort of like dog fighting. They're like rotating around each other. This might actually be a little cooler. Uh, the only other thing I did was add just a, a black background and connect that up. So it was a little easier to see, but boom, tons of potential um, for this offset modifier. And uh, like you can use it in so many different ways. You saw just on the center, you have all these different modes that just, hey, take two values. It's generating math in different ways. Um, another way I used these modifiers recently uh, is on this wild uh, just test I was recreating. Check this out. I've got three little circles, but as I move them around, it's actually uh, using that offset modifier to look at the distance between the points and change the size of uh, some of these circles based on that distance and do some like really cool stuff along the way. So this is, this is using that same modifier, but in new and exciting ways. And if I added animation to this after, uh, afterwards, you'd uh, end up with pretty wild look. So like that's how, that's just how fusion goes. Uh, right? It's, it's knowing the tools and then figuring out creative uh, ways to do stuff with them. But hey, if you've never used the offset modifier or even perturb, I've talked about perturb more, um, but if you've never used either of them, uh, this is a, a, a nice little exercise to get in there, get used to modifiers. And then from then you're just poking on, see what else, what else is in there. And okay, one last thing I wanna show off. Uh, the different modifiers it gives you access to uh, do vary depending on the parameter. If I just create a background node and right click on this, I can modify with gradient color and that actually modifies the entire color block. So now I have uh, just a, a black to white. If I scrub, nothing happens. If I come into time controls, pull up, this end time to what, like 120? Then at zero, it will be this first color, and at 120 something, it'll be the second color. And this is much harder to do if you try to like keyframe the color values just on here, because it's like, it's doing weird stuff. But here, it does everything you actually want, and you can change the timing, you can do tons of stuff. Uh, this gradient color, only comes up as an option when you right click to add a modifier to actual color controls. So it's always worth exploring, seeing if there's like new modifiers hiding in little pockets um, of resolve that you don't know about. Super cool. Okay, one last thing, one last thing. If I create just a mask and I boom, 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 uh, pull up the border with boom, I've got a line. Uh, down here where it's actually the shape animation, I can right click on this and go to uh, insert perturb and then what it's actually going to do is apply that perturb to every point along this path so now you've got this random path like 
wobbling around and you can even change the jaggedness of that uh someone showed me this it was wild i knew never knew this was here there's always cool modifier stuff um so it's it's hey it's worth right clicking checking out modifier checking without insert uh the calculation tool is super cool but i've already shown off more than i thought i was in this video so maybe another time thanks for watching i'll see you next time